today we are going to go through a very important topic which is volumetric properties of pure fluids this is basically chapter 3 in smith and venice and uh, this particular chapter takes us through various pressure volume and temperature property uh, you know relationships it can uh, be as simple as ideal gas pv is equal to rt to virial equation of state to the cubic equation of state and their implications we would have learned about this ideal gas equation van der waals equation virial equations but why all those equations are required how these equations have come up what are the basis for such equations and what are the uses of these equations is what we are going to see in this entire chapter. So next few videos will take you to, through the importance of volumetric properties for pure fluids. First of all, let us try to understand why this kind of chapter or why these kind of equations are required. So, volumetric properties are required as for basically few things. One, <clears throat> first and foremost, say for example, I say that I am having a fluid at some pressure and some temperature. The first thing I should know that at this pressure and this temperature, whether this particular fluid will be in its gaseous states or it will be in its liquid state or in a solid state. If I put it from the other perspective, that I want to compress some particular gas right at a, at some temperature and you know convert it to liquid then how much amount of pressure I have to add fine so I need there I need some relationship which will tell me that okay for this pressure and temperature this will be in this state or this phase or the fluid will be in other phase and if I want to change the phase, I have to apply this much amount of pressure, I have to apply this much amount of heat or I need to, you know, cool down this fluid likewise. So, the best way to do that is you have kind of a plot representing various phases for a given fluid. But every time you cannot take that short plot for every particular fluid and hence there is a need to, you know, develop a kind of a mathematics. So, what we will try to do is, we will first try to, you know, understand the experimentation, convert that experimentation in kind of a plot and then converting that into a form, form a kind of an equation, which equation can then be utilized for our purpose. So, first thing is, to know the state of a particular fluid, we require volumetric properties. Second, we have discussed about various heat and work interaction. So, delta U is equal to Q plus W or delta H is equal to Q plus W for you know closed system and open system respectively. When we try to find Q delta U or W right or delta H, we require values of P, V and T. And how do we get those P, V and T? By means of some equation, right? We cannot experimentally find every time the values of P, V and T. So, for a given set of data, when I want to find out heat and work interactions, I require the values of PVT which can be obtained through PVT relationship or volumetric properties of the fluids. So, that is the another aspect where I require volumetric properties. Third is when I want to design storage for a given particular fluid. Say for example, I want to store a gas at some pressure temperature, what should be the volume of the tank which I require? So, I must know the volume of the gas corresponding to the given pressure and temperature and accordingly I need to design the tank. Fine. Whether it is a gas or liquid or whatever, whatever fluid I have at a given pressure temperature and if I want to store it and if I want to design a tank to store it, I must get that. I can also use pressure temperature to know the flow rates when these fluids are passing through the pipeline. So, what I can do is for a given pipeline, I measure the pressure, I measure the temperature. If I know the fluid which is passing through the, uh, the pipeline, I can measure the flow rate because given pressure and temperature, I can find the volume 
and I can also find correspondingly with the help of the area and all I can find out the flow rate of the fluid under consideration. So basically I need uh, volumetric properties for designing, 2 for heat and work interaction and 3 for knowing the state of a given system. Fine. With that, if we proceed further, so this is something which I have already discussed. So you can use it for metering of the fluids or sizing of the vessel which I have already said. You can also use for the interaction of you know internal energy enthalpy, basically energy calculations. And this is the diagram which is for any given pure fluid which represent various states of a particular fluid. This diagram is drawn on a PT scale. So, how do I generate it? I have a piston cylinder arrangement, right? And I also have some heating fluid passing through the jacket. And I can maintain temperature through this fluid in and fluid out. So, a fluid is circulated around this to maintain some temperature and this piston can move up and down for the pressure. There is no mention of the volume in, in this diagram. Volume may increase and decrease and depending upon the state. But I can change the pressure and temperature. So, say for example, I fix a temperature by circulating the fluid at some temperature and then vary the pressure. So, for a given temperature, I can see how pressure varies. So, one thing which I would like you people to appreciate is that when I draw a vertical line, the temperature is constant. When I draw horizontal line, pressure is constant. So, say for example, I fix the unit, uh, I fix the location of the piston and then keep on changing the fluid temperature, I will get this horizontal line. And if I fix the temperature and I move the piston, I will get a horizontal, uh, I will get a vertical line, right? Okay, so I will generate this diagram by plotting, see by I, I plot this lines which are known as saturated line. So, I can get this PD diagram by plotting the vapor pressure of a given fluid. So, this divides my entire plot into this region, this region and this region. So, this is the vapor region, this is the liquid region and this is the solid region. Naturally, we understand that as the temperature is less, we have solid. For the higher temperature and lesser pressure, we have got vapor. For higher temperature and high pressure, we have got liquid region. So, the, these are the regions which we have and if I want to switch over from one phase to another phase, as I was mentioning, what I need to do is this. So, say for example, I am here and I want to come to here. Say for example, this is 1 and 2. From point 1 and 2, from, from, uh, starting from 1, if I want to reach 2, I have to keep on decreasing the pressure at a given temperature. So, liquid, 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 saturated liquid and vapor. So, this is subcooled liquid, saturated liquid, vapor and superheated liquid. So, this is how I can convert. Fine. Another aspect which we have to understand here is there are a few points. One of the points is triple point. Another point is critical point. So, a triple point is a point where all three phases that is liquid, solid and vapor are in equilibrium with each other. Critical point for a pure component or pure fluid is highest temperature and highest pressure till which we can differentiate between vapor and liquid. So, beyond this point, it is all fluid region. So, it will be all hazy. We cannot differentiate between vapor and liquid. Fine. So, till this point, if I keep on heating, right, or increasing pressure, I have a difference. There will be a difference between vapor and liquid. But as I move in the fluid region, I will have a hazy material, which is nothing but, uh, which will have properties, few of the properties like vapor, few of the properties like liquid. If, if my, you know, movement from A to B is vertical, as I have mentioned, it will be like this, that there will be an abrupt change from, you know, uh, liquid to vapor. But if it is a, if, if it is like this, what happens is, I have, I will enter into the fluid region and then I enter here. Now, this is, you know, continuously moving from liquid, 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 it enters the fluid region. So, there will be hazy 
there will be no demarcation between vapor and liquid and then as soon as it goes below this again it will enter into this region where which is a gas region so the way in which we you know reach from vapor to liquid the amount of energy required amount of uh, you know uh, changes which is which are taking place would be different okay now if we talk about all these regions these regions are single phase region that is solid liquid and vapor all these lines which are bifurcating two phases are two phase systems so the line which is demarcating solid and liquid is fusion curve so this corresponds to the solid and liquid equilibrium this line you know differentiate solid and vapor so this particular curve 1 to 2 is representing sublimation curve which is nothing but the uh, solid and vapor equilibrium line and 2 to C differentiate liquid and vapor phases and hence it represents vapor plus liquid equilibrium. So, all the lines are representing two phase, all the regions are representing single phase, triple point represents three phase, fine and this entire diagram is a qualitative representation of a particular fluid for a PT behavior. So, this is how pressure and temperature would vary for a pure fluid and it will create this kind of phase diagram. The numerical values may differ for different species, but the qualitative nature would remain same. Critical point corresponds to this PC and TC. So, every species would have its own TC and PC, right, beyond which there is no differentiation between vapor and liquid. Fine. So, and as I mentioned earlier, there is no mention of how volume is going to change, which I think we will be able to see uh, when we discuss about PV diagram. Another aspect which we can look for this particular diagram, which we will see in the next video is the application of Gibbs phase rule. So, all of you might be aware about this Gibbs phase rule, which is nothing but 2 minus pi plus n or 2 minus p plus c. We can apply this Gibbs phase rule here in order to understand various degrees of freedom and degree of freedom analysis and how this impacts our choice of independent variable. So, we will analyze the same diagram with the help of degrees of freedom or Gibbs phase rule when we meet in the next video. Thank you.